So the first thing I want to do in this video is just import a sound and just talk about moving objects. So to do that, we need to add an audio track. And here's the audio track and it's represented up here. So if I select the microphone, here's the microphone. It's always at the sort of zero point in the middle of the graph. And this usually drops a sound in front uh, and then you can just sort of adjust it from there. So let's add a sound to this. So we're going to go to this audio file. See, as I, you'll notice, as I select an element, this changes to that particular element. So now it's on mic system or microphone. Select that, and now it's on audio track. So we're going to click this plus button here. And I'm just going to select the crow. That's what I was going to do. Okay, so now we have the crow right in front of the microphone. So I'm going to render that. So now I'm going to move it to the right. So you can do it in two ways. You can just, if you hover here, you're going to move it without any constrictions. Or if you grab one of these tangents, you, you can be more precise. And I generally like to work that way. The other way you can work is go to this point X, Y, Z, and you can maneuver it that way as well. And that's good if you want to type in a particular distance. So let's say I want it 10 feet to the right and 10 feet in front of the mic. The Z is the up-down axis. So let me switch this to the left-hand view. So here is the microphone. Here is the sound. And now you see it's on the same plane. So if we want to make it a little higher, I'm going to make that 10 feet as well. So it's basically 10 feet above view 10 feet forward and 10 feet to the side now bring it down to the back so I want to talk about moving this object so let's say we want the crow to just fly by us so if we look down here and just let's kind of talk about interacting with the space and distances. Right now, one of these squares is one yard. If I hold down the control key, you could notice a magnifying glass comes up. I could zoom out, I'm gonna zoom out. So one of these squares is gonna equal, just to make the math easier, 10 yards. So 10 yards is 30 feet, and the yard is three feet. So, so this is 30 feet. So if we wanna, now we're moving this out 30 feet to the right. Okay, and then we're going to, we want it to fly across in front of us. So to do that, there's two ways you can do it. I'm going to talk about the way that you're probably more familiar with because you've done this if you've played with After Effects or even automation in Pro Tools. Um, if I click on this little plus sign, I can create automation for volume. I can also create automation for position, the point and point rotation. Let's just worry about point right now because that's, our location. So right now I set a keyframe. You can see it right down here. Okay, at the beginning of the timeline, that's placing it here at this point. Okay, so now we'll go to the end of the crow sound. And I'm going to move this across to here. Okay, so let's think about the distances we have. To move back to the first point, you can drag the playhead back, but if you want to get specifically on a first point, you can click on this little arrow down here. Okay, so right now it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 yards, so 30 feet away, and it's going to fly across, and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 30, so it's 30 feet, so basically it crosses, 60 feet across us. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we just had it go across. Now let's say we want to have it go, not across in front of us, but come from behind and fly over us from the right to the left. And this is where working with keyframes can be a little bit tricky because you gotta make sure you're on a keyframe before you start moving it because if you don't, then you're gonna add an additional keyframe and things will be kind of wanky. So the best thing to do is to use the arrow to make sure you're on a keyframe Okay, so now I'm definitely on that keyframe, and I'm going to 
and drag it to the back. Yeah, we'll go two, four, six, eight, ten. So now we're like 30 feet back. So now if we pan across, we'll see it's going to come from the back and cross behind us, actually. So let's see what that sounds like. Okay, cool. Let's say we want to have it come across, um, but cross in front of us, not cross over us to be in front of us. So now we want to go to the last keyframe and we're going to drag this forward a little bit and let's check to see our path of travel. All right, it's still crossing behind us, but it's To do this, let's see. We want to kind of go directly over our head, so let's move this point up a little bit. And let's see what it does. Yep, kind of going eh, maybe a little more forward. So this is where you have to be careful because I did not click to the keyframe. I think so. Did I create a new keyframe? No, I don't think I did. Can you move this a little more forward? Let's see what happens now. Cool. Now that's kind of crossing over us just in front of us. Now let's take a look at this from the side view. So we're good. The bird is flying. Let's see how many feet above us. What are we? Two yards. So and that's like six feet. Let's, let's say we want the bird flying higher above us. Um, again, we just want to go through and just want to be emphatic about the fact that make sure you're on the keyframes before you make these moves. So I'm going to just raise it up higher. And then I'm going to go to the next. So I put it, you know, somewhere around. If I want to be accurate, I can look at this value here for the Z value. Um, in fact, let's do that. I'm going to put in 18 feet. Okay, so just to be more specific. And then I'm going to go to the end. And you notice it dropped down because we have the keyframe, so I need to change this to 18 feet. And there we are. So I want to talk about a different way. <laughs> Sorry, I hear my, my daughter has heels on upstairs. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to talk about a different way to move an object and sound particles. And some, I, I kind of like it better. Keyframing is really good, um, but you're always having to worry about jumping on the right space. And if you actually need to move. Not in a straight line, like here we have the bird flying down and flying up again. You do need to use keyframes. But if you just have it moving in a straight line, uh, there's another way which I like to try, or I like to use. And you can use it either way, but I want to show it to you as well. First of all, I'm going to delete this automation. How do you do that? If you just control click down by the automation, you'll see delete automation track as an option. You click OK. All right, so now we no longer have automation on the bird. 